This episode is about the number one team on the Juggernaut Index, the Green Bay Packers. Let me begin by telling you the precise moment when it was officially decided, beyond any doubt, that Green Bay would rank atop the 2010 Juggernaut Index. Following the Packers' third preseason game, a 59-24 shellacking of the Colts, I happened to be a part of the media herd in the home team's locker room at Lambeau Field. My primary purpose was to get quotes for this preseason piece on the Green Bay defense. But while I was waiting for B.J. Raji to become presentable, I listened to a few of Aaron Rodgers' post-game thoughts. This statement was among the first made by the Pro Bowl quarterback, and I quote, I just didn't like our rhythm tonight. Now, I'll remind you that the Packers had just scored 59 points. They had demolished the defending AFC champs. Rodgers himself threw for 195 yards in the first half, completing 72.4% of his passes, and he connected with three different receivers for touchdowns. In two quarters of action, Green Bay's first team offense, playing without number one wide receiver Greg Jennings, had gained 236 total net yards. And still, Rodgers wasn't happy with their rhythm. If 59 points doesn't satisfy him, you wonder what might. Would 70 points be enough? 80? 100? 150? It's only a preseason game, of course, and we need to be careful not to overstate the importance of exhibition stats. But come on! The Packers weren't at full strength, yet they just embarrassed Indianapolis. Even if you're not quite ready to fast-track this team to the Super Bowl, two out of three Yahoo NFL experts have done it, but you don't have to. We need to acknowledge the impressive collection of talent that's gathered in Green Bay. This group is a fantasy juggernaut of the highest order. Just look at all the upper tier fantasy options on the Packers roster. Rodgers passed for 4,434 yards and 30 touchdowns last season while delivering the NFL's lowest interception percentage, 1.29. He has the arm strength to make any throw in the playbook. He's quick he quickly re he's quick to read defenses, and his improvisational skills are terrific. Rodgers doesn't need to have a calm pocket in order to be effective either. He played at a ridiculously high level in 2009, despite persistent O-line issues. He also is a mobile quarterback who rushed for 316 yards and 5 touchdowns last year. Add it all up, and you'll find that Rodgers was the top overall scorer last year in standard fantasy leagues. Tight end Jermichael Finley is going to be a star. Period. No debate allowed. He's 23 years old and on the doorstep of a great career, assuming he can stay healthy. This guy is simply an impossible matchup. He's much too fast for any linebacker to cover, and he's too tall and athletic for basically any NFL defensive back. He has excellent hands, too. In that August win over the Colts, Finley was peppered with targets, catching six balls for 85 yards and one touchdown. Late in the second quarter, Rodgers hit him down the seam for a 25-yard gain throwing high into double coverage and letting Finley outleap everyone on the field. At that moment, I was convinced that the only human capable of covering Finley would be, well, maybe a Finley clone, but no one else. It would not be a surprise if he emerges as the number one fantasy tight end in 2011 drafts. In each of the past two seasons, Greg Jennings and Donald Driver have finished with thousand plus receiving yards. Both of them are perfectly safe fantasy plays. There were a few questions surrounding the 35-year-old driver entering camp, but the preseason quieted those concerns. Jennings ranks as our number 8 wide receiver for fantasy purposes, and no expert places him lower than ninth overall. He's coming off a moderately disappointing season, 68 receptions for 1113 yards and 4 touchdowns, but that's because Rodgers so effectively spread the wealth last season. Nine different Packers caught TD passes, and no individual player had more than six. Jennings is a big play threat at all times, capable of getting deep, but also adept at turning short slants into long game-changing scores. Driver is a PPR star with 7,000-yard seasons to his credit. There's talent buried on the depth chart here, too. If either Jennings or Driver misses time, James Jones and or Jordy Nelson get real interesting. Jones would be a number one for several NFL teams, and he'll be a must-start fantasy asset if or when he gets a bump in the Green Bay receiver hierarchy. Ryan Grant has rushed for more than 1,200 yards in back-to-back -back seasons, and he's coming off an 11 TD campaign. 
If you manage to draft Grant in the late second round or early third, near his ADP of 22.3, then it's okay to gloat just a little bit. You nabbed a rock-solid running back who's in line for 300 touches, and he's tied to a fantastic offense. For those who handcuff, Brandon Jackson is the clear choice. In fact, he's the only choice, because the Packers kept just two tailbacks on the final roster. This team has total confidence in Jackson's abilities. Head coach Mike McCarthy put it this way just last month, and I quote, Brandon Jackson, to me, is an every-down back. He's a good special teams player, too. He's a complete football player, and if we had to play all three downs with him, I wouldn't even blink. Green Bay's defense finished second in the NFL in yards allowed last season, limiting opponents to 284.4 yards per game. This group was also the league's top-ranked run defense, 83.3 yards per game, and it led in interceptions with 30. Charles Woodson had a brilliant season for the Packers, earning defensive player of the year honors after recording 74 tackles and creating 13 turnovers, 9 interceptions, and 4 forced fumbles. He also returned 3 picks for TDs. Coordinator Dom Capers maximized Woodson's unique skill set, using him effectively in coverage as a blitzer, as a rover. He was everywhere, essentially. Linebacker Clay Matthews emerged as a dangerous edge rusher in his rookie season with 10 sacks, while linebacker Nick Barnett with 106 tackles and 4 sacks and defensive back Nick Collins with 53 tackles and 6 INTs were great again. Entering 2010, this defense projects as a top 5 unit. They were eaten alive by elite quarterbacks last year. Favre gone twice, Roethlisberger once, and Warner shredded them in the playoffs. But they absolutely tortured everyone else. If you drafted this defense, you'll simply park it in your active roster and enjoy the results. The Packers' early schedule appears to be friendly at Philadelphia versus Buffalo at Chicago and versus Detroit. Okay, Jay's heads, that's a wrap. The Juggernaut Index is finally complete. I'd like to thank the people who subscribe to my channel, uh, Lions to Super Bowl, Shuzo, Cheesefan211, Chris Buddha, Titans All the Way, and SV2111, along with Super Lucario98 for subscribing from my other channel, Nikki D97. And also the people who friended me, Draft Sharks Fantasy, Peyton's Girl 1, E Van, or EH Van, FF Mayhem, Real Estate Radio USA, uh, Football Rob 2010, Lions to the Super Bowl again, and Best Music and Dance. Thanks, guys. You're all awesome. Uh, later tonight, I will be posting uh, a recap of Week 1 in the NFL and some potential uh, waiver wire ads that you're going to want to make before, the, uh, uh, before it starts up. I think it starts up on Tuesday at 3 in the morning, or 3 a.m. Uh, Central Standard Time, so... You might want to pick, or you might want to check that video out. It'll be, it'll come out sometime later on tonight. So, see you guys, and I hope you enjoyed the 2010 Yahoo.com Fantasy Football Juggernaut Index.